go into record mode now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so I'm delighted to have Winston Scholzberg from uh, the Netherlands on my podcast today. Winston has been a business relationship for me for, uh, for about one and a half year now, and we've been working on some very exciting things together. I'm not going to introduce him myself. I'm going to let a Winston introduce himself. So, Winston, why? welcome to the show, Winston. Thank you, Mark. Great, great. So, why don't we start this off with, um, you, why don't you tell us what, what your story is? Why, why do, how did you get to where you, where you are today? Thank you for the question, because it's yeah. a very interesting question. And my story started in South America uh, 51 years ago. I, I was born in Paramaribo, Suriname, and when I was, I think, four years old, my mom left to go to Europe, to the Netherlands, because she, has, she had a mission, and one of her missions was that she didn't want to have a rental home. She wanted to have a owner's home. She wanted to buy her own place, and so she left her kids behind and moved to the Netherlands with the plan to stay there for five years and earn enough money to, to, to buy a house and a piece of land. And she accomplished that. But then my father came back into her life and he said, well, you know what, let's, big, let's build a bigger house. But she said, well, I haven't seen my kids in five years, so we're going to bring them over to the Netherlands. So that's how I, at nine years old, I moved to, to The Hague the Netherlands, and I started to basically discover the world in a different way, because South America, Suriname, the sun is always shining, it's always great weather, and I, I had the, the illusion that the sun was always the same. I think this is one, this is one of the richest lessons I got, because in South America, when the sun shines, you go out, you play as a kid, that's, you know, and then I came to Holland, and then the sun also was shining, and I thought, well, it must be hot. So I ran out with my brother, and it was freezing minus 5 Celsius. So we ran up the stairs again, and we were freezing. And I thought, this is a crazy country because the sun is shining, but it's cold. How is that possible? So that was my big awakening to think about the things that I see are not the real things. It's, uh, that's my interpretation of things. And so that's, that, that's my start of my journey, and, and I started to have goals. I wanted to achieve things. I wanted to know things. And my first achievement was that I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to play music because it was in me. So I started beating on everything around me except beating on people. I tried to make music of sounds that I heard. And so I started to have a career as a, as a drummer. I was 13 years old, and I played my first band. And from my, from my experience of just communicating with people, trying to understand where they are and where I am and how we can connect, I, I understood that, that I was a, let's call it a mechanic from my talent dynamics uh, assessment tool. Is I, I could hear something or see something and then trying to arrange it for some, somebody and just trying to fix it for somebody. So my music, my music career started, and I became a professional drummer, and I started playing in rock bands, funk band, African, Arabian, you name it, and I was doing it, because I, I believe that I, I should not be a funk drummer or a reggae drummer, I should be just a drummer that was able, who was able to play in all kinds of bands and connect with all kinds of people with all kinds of uh, uh, different backgrounds. And so... My drumming career was, was really interesting, and then I moved on because somebody uh, saw something or heard something that I was, I was telling some stories, and they said, oh, you're a great storyteller, and I said, no, I'm a musician, I'm a drummer. <laughs> uh, long story short, they, they, you know, they lured me into this, this idea of me being a storyteller, and I started telling stories. And that was the best thing that happened to me because I, I had a, like a career of 20 years as a storyteller with over 6,000 performances. And that insight of just working with close to a million kids, telling stories to them and grown-ups, going into prisons, working with uh, inmates, telling stories, going to banks and telling stories, 
so my whole career as a drummer shifted dramatically, not only my impact, but also my finance. <laughs> because a musician, well, some of you might know, unless you have a number one hit, you're not making that much money. But as a storyteller, I was making, let's say, we're talking pounds or dollars here, but let's say I was making $100 for one show as a drummer, working for 12 hours, doing three sets, and then I shifted to being a storyteller, and I was making five, six, seven hundred dollars for doing forty-five minutes. That was a major shift. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a year I was doing three hundred fifty shows. So you do the math. Yeah. So my career as a storyteller had such a huge impact on on my goals and my my belief of what is possible. And 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 from working with with the stories and the words and connecting with people. I got questions, okay, so what is it that you do as a storyteller? How, how is it possible that you have such an impact with your stories, with the kids that we know, and, and you come in 45 minutes and you, you just impact them, you motivate them, you trigger them to do things that we thought were impossible for them to do with the limitations that we had. And I did not know, I, I had to figure it out. What is it, what is the magic, what is the formula that I used? So I started making notes, and these notes led up to the West Method, and I started training these teachers. Now, mind you, I come from the University of Life and Experience, so I didn't have a, a degree in, in, in anything. That, let's, let's, let's break up here for a sec, because there's so much that, you, um, that, you, that you've said in these, um, the, the, these five minutes about your journey, and how through music, you discovered the world of storytelling, and through the storytelling, you discovered the world of helping people. Uh, if you start putting it in a method, you're helping people to uh, to to be better in what they do. So that's a really exciting, a really exciting story, Winston. And I think it's a perfect basis on uh, on developing your business to a to a higher level. So so before we go into this West, West method, yeah, let's let's talk about a bit about the two things. Um, it's about the the importance of making an impact and the importance of storytelling. Yeah, so, so, so let's talk a bit about this impact, because in the work that I've done with you so far, yeah, in making an impact is, is, is key for you. Yeah, so, 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 so how do you see that? Why do you have such a high, um, give that such a high role to play in what you do? I, I believe that, that being a, let's say, being a drummer, gave me the insight of connecting instantly with what I was doing. Mm, yeah. it, a drummer has a, a humongous responsibility of keeping time, keeping groove, and all those things. Connecting with the musicians, connecting with the audience. And because I understood that, then when I shifted to storytelling, I brought that energy and that experience into connecting with my audience in a different way that I believe the storytellers that I was seeing were doing. And, and so why is impact so important? Well, my philosophy about impact on storytelling and musicianship is that it's not about me. When I tell a story or when I play music, it's not about me. It's about the audience. It's about me connecting with the audience and finding the solution, the code, to have the highest connection with them instantly, as 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 fast as possible, and as deep as possible, and as and that's what I like about it. Um, yeah, because it's 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 actually it's not about making an impact; it's about opening with an impact, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Opening because it's not about me. I am here to serve the audience. When I tell a story, I'm here to to paint the picture in such a way that is. It's like effortless for the audience to just to just take the ride with me. Mm, and, and that's the, um, yeah, my audience, they might think, hey, what does this have to do with social media? But, but let's be honest, yeah, social media, your blog is all about opening with an impact. Your graphics is all, and the visuals that you're using in your social media is all about making an impact so people will open your article or will watch your video. 
and that's where opening with an impact is such a it's a, a very important element of your um, of how you communicate with people isn't that correct Winston correct mark and 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 one, once you understand that and then it doesn't matter what kind of occupation you have if it's social media is a musician is a storyteller or is a manager you have to have that connection that impact and it should be instant because people's attention spans that's it's short so you don't have that much time to really work on it you have to be there instantly and connecting on the highest and the deepest level mm, that's, that's really really interesting really exciting so so let's take this to the next step once you have that impact once you have that attention then you start with your story isn't it then you start with your story and 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 i believe that from a storyteller perspective is that you you are already in the story once you are on stage before you hit the stage, you go into that mindset of serving, of being a, a, a guide for the people to go with you into the, that world that you're creating. And so I think that's the same for social media. You, you basically bring them into that world and they, they have to just, you know, follow that or mm -hmm. just click, click and just leave. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you, you need to make that impact. That's, that's how I look at it. Yeah, and, and, and how and what I really enjoy in, in, uh, in, in seeing you perform is that, that you actually use your experience as a drummer to, 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 to make an impact. Yeah? Uh, how do you use rhythm in making an impact, in connecting with your audience? Well, I think by now people that are listening, they, they understand that, that my English is not... That's, I, I always say it's not the highest level of English. I, I, have, a, I have a simple way of, 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 of speaking English because Dutch is my, let's say, my first language. I have a Surinamese as my second language. English is not my, let's call my uh, dominant language that I, that I speak. So I really have to make an impact by, by slowing down my speech, for instance. And your question was about how to make that impact with using music. Yeah. Well, people are so... Uh, people are so, let's say, distracted that before I start my story, in it doesn't matter what kind of story it is, if it, it's a story about uh, sales or a story about uh, public speaking, it doesn't matter. I always try to make that con connection. So I will start a, a call and response with the audience. And in, in that way, I will, I will clap a rhythm and then ask them to repeat it. Mm. And uh, the impact of this, people don't, don't really understand why I do this. But once I explain it to them, then they go, oh, this is brilliant. Now, what happens when you have an audience, let's say 10 people, 15 people, 100 people, 200, 2,000, doesn't matter. And I come up, they look at me, who are you? They don't know me. They, they really want to know who I am. So I'm, I have like one or two seconds to make that first impression and that impact. So when I come up and I do it non-verbally, I start clap a simple rhythm like, uh, and they have to repeat it. This means that I'm now not speaking to individuals. I'm speaking, I'm, I'm trying to connect with the group as one, as a unit, as a one, as one piece. And once I got them to be in sync with each other, clapping on the same frequency, on the same beat, that means whenever I start my story from that perspective, from that point, this means it's way easier for me to hone in the information. Yeah. Because now I'm not, not speaking to 100 individuals or 20 individuals. I'm speaking to one group. And, and, and it's, it's such a huge difference in speaking to that one group instead of trying to convince 50 people with different well, mindsets. I totally agree. And, and I can, can, can uh, confirm that from experience after being in your session and seeing how you use that, uh, that approach and how you really got an audience on board. So it works really well. Um, okay, so give me some examples of stories that you tell. I have so many different ways of getting into stories. And actually, I got this question because I, I had a session for a university in Rotterdam, I think two weeks ago, and I did a, a three-hour session on goals, goal setting. And at the end, one of the teachers I, was a question and answer, and the teacher said, but Winston... Can, can I ask you this question? Because, you know, I've been listening to you for three hours and you captivate me. Now, now explain to me, how do I do this mm -hmm. with my audience with a different topic? 
And I said, well, let me think. And I said, well, let me ask the audience this question. And I said, in my illusion, I'm connecting with you through small stories about my experience, about my life. So if I want to share a story about not giving up, then I can tell you a story about a client that I have and what happened with the client and the impact, and then you get the message. So I use stories all the time to, mm. to bring people to the reality because we know, and, and once we have this experience, we never forget, if you, if we were, if you were a child and your, your mother or your father or your grandfather read you a story before you go, went to bed or stole your story, you know the story. You know the details. Mm. You know, you know, you know the impact of the and the messages in the story. It's like so clear to you. Now, trying to explain the message without telling the story, it's a hard bargain. Mm, yeah. It's hard to do that. So what I do, I constantly tell small stories, and in that way, the attention is always there, and people relate to the story, and then with the story, they got the message. Yeah. In, in any audience that I've that I've taught my, 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 my West method or anything else, and I've told some of these stories, and I just go, can go back to them, I think one year later, or two years later, or five years later, and I said to them, do you want to be chocolate? And instantly they know what I'm talking about, and they get the message instantly, mm -hmm. yeah. because it was such a profound story with, with such a huge impact on their imagination, and anybody else that, for instance, the audience that they don't know me yet, but if I tell them, you want to be chocolate? They're like, what you mean, chocolate? But in, in our story, knowing it, it's not, don't try to be perfect. Don't try to be chocolate. And this is a story I told this a friend, a, a client of mine, and I helped him to overcome his fear of failure by asking him, I'm not going to go through the whole story because I think we don't have the time, but I, I, I asked him, he told me, listen, it, he had to do a, a, a task and he, and he thought he, he failed. And I asked him, I said, listen, so, so you think you failed? Why? He said, it wasn't perfect what I did. I said, okay, that might be the case. And now, can you tell me in your life what is perfect? And he thought for a second, two seconds, three seconds, and he said, you know what, Winston? You know what is perfect in my life? And this guy, mind you, was 18, 19, autistic guy. He said, you know what, Winston? Chocolate is perfect. You know, it doesn't, yeah. matter, it doesn't matter when I eat it in the morning, on the evening. It's always perfect, Winston. And he had me there because I was like stunned. How, you know, how yeah. you come up with chocolate? So I thought for a couple of seconds. I said, okay, now, now, now tell me, are you chocolate? And he looked at me and goes, no, Winston, I'm not chocolate. I said, well, then you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm, yeah. So that, that's, you know, I, short, yeah, I, short, yeah, I shortened yeah. the story, but the impact was huge because this guy's life changed completely. Mm, absolutely. He, yeah. he, he, from that day on, he didn't want to be chocolate because he knew he couldn't be chocolate, so he didn't have to be perfect. Mm. So he was able to make more mistakes, but then by making mm. these mistakes, he became more successful. Yeah. Because we, we all know we make a lot of mistakes and we learn from them, hopefully. And once we learn from them, we, we are able to make more mistakes and achieve more. And some people are so afraid of, uh, of making mistakes, so they, are, they get stuck mm. because they are afraid to be, they, don't, they want to be perfect. They want it to be like 100%. And, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's amazing. a great story. Yeah, that's a great story. So, so you've been into this storytelling now for a number of years. Um, and, 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 you know, obviously storytelling you know, is in, in marketing as a concept is becoming more and more relevant and more <laughs> yeah. important as well. So do you see um, businesses slowly taking up on the concept of storytelling and understanding it? I hear a lot of people talk about storytelling and and I yes I I I think that what like, let's say my philosophy is that they they don't really okay they have a a way of looking at it but like I said the way I look at it it's always about the client it's always about how can I make the client understand 
the story. Mm. So most of the time, I have to simplify the story. I have to make it so simple that they understand it, they get it. And, yeah. you know, and, and because I come from this, this university of life and, of, and experience of more than 6,000 performances, telling these stories to, to kids, sometimes three years old, four years old, five years old, and I'm telling the same story to these kids, telling the same story to kids that are 10 years old, to 15, to 30, grown-ups, people in prison, banks, and the same story, I make it adaptable so they understand and they get the message. I think that, to me, that is true storytelling. Mm, yeah, yeah. But do you see businesses adopting it as, a, as an idea, as a concept? Do you I, see yep. a, a growth in businesses accepting this? I, I, I hear a lot of people and they ask me to come up uh, to their companies to explain to them what I do, exactly. how do I do it, and how can they make that impact and of course, yes, it, it makes more sense because people are, are smarter now. They, they don't go for the, you know, the, 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 the shortcut. They want to have the authenticity of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the whole drive in social media is, is, is sort of, sort of uh, promoting this as well. Yeah, because obviously, as we know, social media is not about um, the corporate story, but it is about the story behind the story, as it were. Mm. Yeah, it's the uh, the people telling, they're talking about their experiences with the company. It is about the developers, the engineers in a company talking about how they develop products, how they engineer the products. It's all about capturing those stories in the, uh, in an organization and in uh, within individuals. So, now you 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 alluded to this earlier, the West method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you sort of put your your experience into a into an approach, which we call which you call the West method. So why True. don't you uh, explain the the audience, the listener, what this this West method is? Well, like I said, what I what I understood from from just doing these stories and you know just having this impact without having a clear and concise idea what the construction was. I was just, let's say, naturally, quote-unquote, gifted to connect with people. And, and what I found out was when, when I got these questions from these teachers, like, so can, can, you, can you teach us how to do this? Or can you come and work for us? Can you be part of our uh, teacher's team? And I said, Actually, no, I cannot because I want to travel. I want to, I want to move around. But when I, start, when I start making notes, I found out that what I was doing is for, like, let's say, for instance, the, the clapping, the, the interactive clapping, I was doing this with the kids. And then I saw that once I start getting a call and response with them, this meant that I had them, I had the attention of, of all these kids because they had so much fun. So that was step one, like, okay, so you have to make that instant connection. And then I wrote down, okay, so what do I do? How do I ask questions? How do I, how do I compliment the kids? Is, could, could they make a mistake in my story? And I found out, no, 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 these kids kids could not make a mistake. If I asked a question and they answered it, and when normally Winston, the normal Winston would go, no, 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 that's wrong. I'm looking for this answer. I said to myself, no, listen, the answer is perfect. It's me having a problem wrapping my brains around the answer that would make it wrong. So how can I wrap my brain around the answer making it right? So I got to Okay, I should ask questions that they could just give me their fantasy and their imagination, and I just, just go with it. So that's the next step. Now, I created seven steps of the West Method, mm -hmm. starting with your, for instance, how do you start? Starting a story is the most difficult part of the yeah. story, in my belief. So how do you start? And... Before you start, what is your state? How in, in what you know? What is your state? How how you, are you here? Are you are you thinking about your bank account? Are you thinking? <laughs> what is it that you do? So we brought that whole process of preparation, the first three steps of the West method, to just the first three steps of the West method is all about you. It's all about. Am I in the here and now? 
how is my breathing? How is my, my state of mind? And once you get through this first three stages, you're in the best place to tell a story. You're in the best place to make a connection with people. And then the, f- the fourth step is the West Talk. Then you start speaking. And the moment you start to speak, you start to tell a story. This means it's not about you anymore. Now it's about the audience. It's about making that other connection. And once you start to speak with the audience, number four, hey, wow, let me listen to the audience. And they might not say anything verbally, but non-verbally they might say a lot. So I pay attention to them. How do I do that? With step five, the West scan. I scan my audience with my eyes and make connection and trying to see all the time what are the cues they're giving me. And so I go through these seven steps. And then step six is how do I move on stage? We call it the West Walk. Mm-hmm. So people, they, they, you know, they walk like a polar bear, you know, quite nervously. I have this, like a structure of moving on stage that will enable any speaker to have a far better connection with the audience. And so the last step is the West Move. It's like when you, once you start, you walk from left to right. We have a structure of walking. This, this makes it interesting. You can stand still but in a different way that some people will stand still. Do you know how your body talks? So these simple seven steps, very, very simple steps, they bring, they bring the story, the authentic story to the audience from an authentic storyteller. Mm, yeah, very, very powerful. And interesting, again, yeah, is, the, um, is how this can apply to the online, um, the, the social media world as well. Yeah, before you start writing your blog, are you in the right frame of mind? Yeah, yeah. Have you done your, uh, your, your research? Do you, mm. Have you got a very clear message what you want to talk about? Um, the, the whole concept of customer personas. Yeah? When uh-huh. you scan your audience uh-huh. in uh-huh. the social media space, you scan your, your customers and you create customer personas so you, you know who you're writing your content for. So, really good story, um, Winston, and, um, and I think well, we, we should actually have a, a better look how we can apply this method to the, uh, the online world. It, it could help you and it can help me in, um, in further developing our, uh, our proposition. Nice. Mm. So, so, if you would give the, the listeners three tips that they can do something with right now. Yeah, based on the um, on the storytelling, on the making an impact. Uh, what would those three tips be? Okay, uh, the first tip I think is know what your message is. Understand and be the message. Yeah. Be be the story. Like from a storyteller perspective, I am the story. Once I'm on stage, I am the story. Mm-hmm. It's about yeah. me being like. Like marinated in the story. Yeah. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> mm-hmm. I totally agree. And what I always add to that: that the more passionate you are about yeah, exactly. your story, exactly. the easier it, it yeah. is to tell yeah. your story. Yeah, yeah. That's why I call it. You know, sometimes words just pop into my head about like having a connection. I call it marinade because yeah. when you marinate it, it's like ingrained into your system. Mm-hmm. It's huge. Like yeah. You know, you, you taste it. You know, you smell it. It's like it's like you know your favorite food. It's the food that tastes exactly how you want it so you have to be the story and once you are the story and make sure the second tip would be make sure that that once you start telling your story on social media or whatever make sure that you get feedback Hmm. you know that you know get the connection because the feedback asking feedback and be vulnerable that's actually the third the third step third uh, tip so you ask feedback and you really listen mm, yeah. to, to the feedback because we have an illusion about the truth. And once you start talking to your audience, getting feedback, this is the reality. So then it's not about you anymore. It's about how they receive your message. Yeah. In this way, this means you might talk to person A and get his or her reality 
and then talk to person B, it's a different reality. So you, what I find when I, when I tell my story or I train people with the West Method, then it almost, it's inevitable for it to become tailor-made. It's, it will always be tailor-made. Mm, yeah. And that's only because I listen to my audience. Yeah. And, uh, that's, 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 these, these are the three tips that I would give. So, uh, yeah, and the listening is, um, as we know in social media, yeah. uh, it is one of the letters of the flirt, yeah, the, the flirt mm -hmm. approach, the mm -hmm. L for listen. So mm -hmm. it's one of the most important elements of the social media. Yeah. So, now I didn't, to summarize, one was um, uh, be the story yourself. Yeah, you have to be the story. Yeah, the, no, marinate, no. marinate the story in you, yeah. so you understand it. You call it passion. Yeah. For me, this is it's like a nice, nice way of, of saying it. Yeah. You, 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 so and then you you ask questions. Ask questions. You get feedback. So you so you get the feedback. Yeah. And once you get the feedback, you have to you have to. Uh, it it becomes so. Instead of having the illusion of what is real, because. When you're alone, yes, that's re <clears throat> real. But once you start communicating, your reality is different than the reality of yeah. the listeners. And once you have the reality of the listeners by by getting the feedback, then you get reality. Yeah. And yeah. that reality, you have to be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. In, in, yeah, you don't be afraid of being yeah. vulnerable. Exactly. You know? Be open because, and accept. Yeah, be open. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So you open, you know, accept. And because it's not about you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not about you. And mm. we have we have a we have created a, a website called thewestmethod.com, thewestmethod.com. Yeah. And and here we we gave these seven techniques, and we cut it up, and explain how to work with these techniques and help yourself. Whether it's getting a job, whether it's uh, talking to your employees, that telling us it's you know it's applicable for for. Let's say most situations you can encounter as a mm -hmm. storyteller, because we all are, we all are storytellers. Yeah. I always say everybody has a story, but not everybody knows how to tell the story. I think that's a, the best close that we can have for this. Yeah. So that's I think this has been really useful and also for me eye opening uh, actually to really dig into this and then see. That there is, it's almost like yeah, mapping the 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 real world and the online world. It works in both environments, mm -hmm. and I think there is an opportunity for the both of us to uh, to do something with that. So, so what I usually do with my uh, my podcast, Sir Winston, is I close the podcast with the the reflections. Yeah, mm -hmm. so these are Winston reflections. Mm -hmm. Just a few questions I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. and uh, that gets the audience gets to know you a bit better. Mm -hmm. So, if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? <laughs> I would be a lion, I believe. Mm, and why? Because I think. A, a lion has a kind of leadership that I like. <clears throat> you know, he's not over act, overly active, but when it's necessary, he knows when to jump in. He has to stay in, in the here and now because there are always people like, you know, like, let's not, let's not say people, other animals like lions that try to take his place. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like real business, right? You know, if you, if you sleep, you, you know, you lose your position, you yeah. lose your job. So he has to be, he has to be really awake. He has to take care of his family. He has to be responsible. A lot of things that I uh, uh, attribute to, to being that lion, that leader. Excellent. Okay. Hey, and if you would be a rock star, which rock star <laughs> would you want to be? Uh, well, uh, I I think mine is a couple of things. I would love to be uh, what Jimi Hendrix has created. Mm -hmm. uh, that I I would I would love to be in his creative mind and create what he has created in my with my talent because what he his legacy still today people are trying to find out. How he created those sounds, for instance, on his on his album with the band of gypsies, songs mm -hmm. like uh, Machine Gun. Every time I listen to that song, it's a 15 minute song. It's like he takes me to a world that I haven't encountered, but he tells me a story that is so real that I remember the first time I listened to this song. I I 
I couldn't speak. I, mm. I was silent for, for 30 minutes because it had such an impact on my imagination of just listening to sounds. And he didn't even use the words. It's like yeah. only music. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Okay, sports personality. Who would you want to be? And this is a tough one because, and yet I think minus a couple of things because you know you know heroes are like a difficult thing. But minus a couple of things, I would love to be in the frame of mind of the expertise of uh, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad the Ali. the one that 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 created the the the, the you know fl float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. entertainer, the, the 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 you know. All that, the whole package. He wasn't always the nice guy, so that part I would leave out. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the the craftsmanship and and the uh, the storytelling, because he you know he knew how to connect yeah, yeah. with his audience. And till day till today, people are still in awe about what he created, yeah. and people are copying what he done yeah. back in the days. Mm. Okay, and finally, if you could be a great statesman, which who would you be? Oh, you know, I'm not into politics, so. That's a really, really, really tough one. That's a really tough one. You know what? I think I would be. I, I, I would. I would be me. And and use the way I look at life, uh, authentically, and being on on this world stage of leaders, which would be hard because you know. <laughs> yeah. But I would. I would try to bring something else to to. Uh, to this world stage of, you know, political leadership, mm -hmm. because I don't believe that they really are are engaged and have the connection with the uh, with their audiences. Yeah. And I would, I would love to bring that connection that is about the audience. It's a, I'm a vegan, so you know you know mm -hmm. what I'm getting at. What I eat, I want to I want to be sure that it's clear as yeah. clean. I don't take medicines, but I, when I take best, I want to, it's about me. It should be about me. So I wouldn't, I would love to be a leader that is connected with the audience, with the, with the, with the, the, the people that live in that con yeah. in my country and, and, and serve them and make them better and make them feel good, have a good life. That's the right answer, Winston. Great. That, this has been so good, Winston. Um, now, if people want to get in touch with you, yeah, what's the the best way? Uh, you, you mentioned a website. Maybe you can mention it again. I don't know if you're on Twitter. Um, yes. So. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. My name, Winston Skalsberg. Uh, yep. You can find me. And, and well, as I mentioned the website, thewestmethod.com. You can find me on winstonskalsberg.com or .nl. We have goalsacademy.nl.com. Just Google my name, you'll yeah. find me. I would love to have, you know, have stories with you, share stories with the audience because you have a great audience, I know. And yeah. uh, thank you, by the way, for giving me the opportunity to share my passion about, mm -hmm. about storytelling. It's, it's great. I'm glad that, that uh, we opened it up for you because there are so many um, touch points between the two areas that we're working in. So, And obviously, I will, in the show notes, um, I will add all your contact details and a link to the, um, the, the website. Thank uh, you. Okay, Wint, well, this has been very useful. Thank you very much. And um, let's uh, continue making an impact and tell our stories. Thank you, Mark. Okay, good.